right? All right. Namaskar, everybody. I wish everybody. Uh, first of all, I thank Anirudh <coughs> for continuing this 1MD live show. And on behalf of me and my Guru Anna, Dr. Harish Shetty, I wish everybody a happy Gudi Padwa, Chaitra Navratri, Gadi, and various other festivities. Also wish Ramadan Kareem. I wish all the people who are fasting for Lent for the upcoming Easter month. And a very happy April. We all know that the second and the third wave of COVID is fully over as far as India is concerned. <clears throat> we also know that the Omicron had three variants, BA1, BA2, and BA3. And the wave which came between the mid of December to mid of January was BA2. In the United Kingdom, an XC variant, a recombinant variant, which is a mixture of BA1 and BA2, was discovered. And we do not know the growth potential, the transmissibility, the vaccine effectiveness, the vaccine invasion of this variant. So it is a variant under investigation and scrutiny. Right now, there is no cause for alarm, no cause for panic. Masking is a habit. It is a good health habit, particularly in closed indoor environment. So we recommend everybody that when you are into a closed indoor environment, whenever you are in a crowd, whenever there are in a poorly ventilated space, now me and Anna are sitting here for a medical conference, it is preferable to mask. So that is the first thing. If you are eligible for your extra dose or precautionary dose, it is preferable to take it. So the worldwide data is very clear that though China is locked down in some parts like Shanghai, South Korea is better. United Kingdom still is having very high rates of COVID. Worldwide, COVID is having different geographical rates. Having said that, having said that, let us be COVID appropriate in our behavior. Let us resume all our economic and educational activities. Outdoor unmasking is desirable. Indoor masking is preferable. And it should be a way of life. That is all I wanted to tell everybody that as we go into the festive season, as we go into the hot summer, hydrate yourself. Hydrate yourself. Hydrate yourself. Look after your health. Look after all your illnesses. And people who are vulnerable, I would still recommend them to mask when they are in indoor, crowded environment and poorly ventilated spaces. Having said that, let me also tell you that the likelihood of another wave coming in India in the next three to six months is most unlikely unless and until there is a new variant of concern. But the surveillance should continue, the sentinel surveillance, the genomic surveillance must continue because you never know when a new variant of concern will come. For example, in October, November, when things were happening in South Africa, none of us even dreamt that an Omicron-like variant will come and sweep the world. It did disrupt our lives. It was more contagious as a strain, but it was less hurtful. So the COVID was more of a nose and throat and less of a lung. Let us move gears now. As we had celebrated the World Autism Day yesterday, I am going to ask Guru Anna the first question for today. Guru Anna, what is your take-home message for everybody as far as COVID-appropriate behavior goes? And after that, Guru Anna is going to spend some time on World Autism Day. Guru Anna. <clears throat> Well, two governments has have said that uh, they're going to stop all the norms for COVID. But as science speaks, and as the world explodes in different parts, China, Germany, Korea, Japan, and others, I would say, keep your guards on for some time. Don't drop it. Me and Dr. Shashank are going to wear masks in indoor closed spaces. Public places where there are uh, there's a there's a big crowd. My best friend's sister and brother-in-law got COVID just a few days ago, and accidentally discovered. So please keep your masks on. Uh, Thirteen patients who died during Omicron were those who were not vaccinated. So if anybody is there around you uh, who's not vaccinated, please see to it that the vaccines are taken please use whatever methods you can they say sama beda uh, and, and and all four methods to see that they're vaccinated 
So without causing fear and anxiety, let people do their routine. Let people be supported to do their routine. Let people be supported to meet their friends and relatives. But thoda din aur guard on rakhye ye hamare dono ka bahut important aapke liye sandesh hai. Well, Lent, please, if you're fasting on Lent, we're waiting for Easter and we're waiting for the Easter eggs also. Gudi Padwa, yes, it was fantastic yesterday. And for everybody who celebrated the, the New Year, and for some who's, who are going to celebrate on April 14th, wish you a very happy, happy New Year. World Autism Day is very important. Autism is a condition where children might not have eye contact, their speech may be affected, their learning also may be affected. Some of them may be very bright, but let me tell you five things. If you have a child who has autism in your building or in your locality, see that your children play with the child. Don't allow the child to be isolated in whatever way he or she can. Educate your children about autism so that when they have a child with autism in the school, they accept the child with open arms. They support the child with open arms and they live with the child so that the child grows normally without rejection without bullying and without absence of love. I would name a few teachers in Bombay who are absolutely child friendly. Principal Rekha Vijaykar, Principal Armaiti Engineer and so many others who have hugged children of autism like nobody else. The third most important thing is I would request all children and all parents, if you are part of your PTAs, if an autism, if a child with autism shouts loudly in the class, let them understand at times it's normal. And see to it that as PTAs, you support children with special abilities, with disabilities to be included in the school, not as a charity, but as a right. Lobby with the principals and teachers to support children with autism. And that is something which is very important. Recently, a mall has been opened somewhere in Kandivali where they have hired children with Down syndrome only. Please visit such places, restaurants, which are manned by children with disabilities, young boys and girls with disabilities, and see to it that you support the cause of autism. If you are owning a factory, an office, and you are the HR in a corporate, or you're an MD in a, in a corporate, or if your neighbor is an MD in a corporate, remember, create positions to hire children with disabilities, children with special abilities, and also children who have autism. My dear parents, one last suggestion. Parents with autism have no other parents to actually go around with. They need a lot of respite care. They suffer from a syndrome known as chhod bhi sakta hu, pakad bhi sakta hu. So my dear parents, once in a while, invite the child with autism to your house and allow the parents of, of, of such children to go for a movie, to go for a holiday, to go for a break, two nights, one day. And if you can do this much, let me tell you, you are doing Ishwari Karya. Bhagwan ki seva, desh ki seva. So with a very, with a very sensitive heart, I've been working with children with disabilities all my life, fought for them all my life. I'll continue doing that all my life. Please open your gray cells of the brain, open the ventricles and the auricles of your heart to do all those five or six things I just suggested. May God bless you. May God bless all the autistic. Now I would like to ask you, Dr. Shashan, our honorable chief minister here, has said now nah, goody padwa gift we we are telling you to uh, be free and be, behave responsibly and that's the message of our chief minister and now what has happened is there are some who are still stuck inside the house and they say no no i mean uh, th there's an extreme form of of recklessness which we saw in the middle of the of the covid now we see an extreme form of isolation and reclusiveness when 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 we are asking them to really move on so how do we think we should we should address that 
No, that's a very good question. I think we have to walk the path and the golden path. And when you are walking the path and the golden path, one has not to be extremist and one has to be prudent, sensible and responsible. So though we have eased out the curbs related to COVID, the disaster management and the emergency act has been revoked. We need to behave responsibly. So the vulnerable groups need to be cautious and careful. As I said, in the they should ensure that their vaccination is appropriate. They take due care. They do the COVID appropriate behavior, which is in place. And I think behave responsibly and take care of themselves. Most important thing for people who are senior citizens is take care of your non-COVID illnesses. It's equally important to take care of the non-COVID illnesses. Because if you do not take care of your non-COVID illnesses, and it's also important to take care of your mental health. Living in reclusion, isolation, negativity, and depression is also not good for health. For good health, you need good physical activity. You need good sleep. You need to meditate, but you also need to move out. You need to also socialize. You also need to go and listen to your musical programs of choice, your movie of your choice. But when you are in a crowd, mask appropriately. That's all it is said. When you are eating outside, when not needed, mask yourself. That's all. Beyond that, I think we need to start resuming normal life. COVID has made us digitalized, made us sedentary, and made us, to some extent, isolated. It is important to break and make the change. I think when you're making a change, it's not easy. We want to be responsible and not reckless. We want to be ensuring that we are appropriate and not you know, reclusive. We want to ensure that we are doing things correctly. At the same time, we are not visualized as creating fear or panic. See, the biggest problem we have is what next? I think we have, to, the world has changed. There are three eras now. There was a BC era before COVID era. Then there was a DC era, which is during COVID era, which is ended probably now, at least for the next three to six months. And then there is after COVID era. And currently, probably, this is the early beginning of an after COVID era. And this is the beginning of an endemic once the WHO says the pandemic is over. WHO has still alerted us that the, the, the COVID is not over. Worldwide COVID is not over. But restrictions are likely to be eased in countries and geographies where transmission is low. So I think we must congratulate both our state and central governments for rising up to the occasion in the last two years our leadership, our administration, and mainly our healthcare force and frontline force. They have 24-7 worked for all of us to save our lives and to keep us safe. Now it is for us to behave appropriately and responsibly. And that is why Dr. Guru Anna, Dr. Harish Shetty asked us this question. Dr. Shetty, in all this anxiety, fear, negativity, people have stopped living their life. And people have stopped being happy. So I want you to tell people at large, the Guru Mantra, how to overcome fear and how to be happy and healthy say at the same time. Because for good health, happiness and the right mental health is so apt and appropriate. Guru Anna has always believed that we must do yoga. We must do yoga. Now, you know, yoga has many components. We had the fortune of having... Ansaji from the Yoga Institute. You know, yoga has a cleaning process, which involves a discipline. Cleaning process are various kriyas. Then yoga has breathing exercises. Rodha has posture exercises, which are basically the asanas. Yoga has the meditation. Yoga has the breathing exercises like pranayama. Yoga has the various other functions which make us less easy. So Umesh ji is asking us a question, Guru Anna, that in two years, people have done a lot of self-introspection. And now is the time for celebration. So Guru Anna, how does one celebrate life after two years of COVID? How does one learn to live life after COVID? And how does one maintain the sanity without recklessness as well as happiness with COVID? Thank you. <clears throat> Adding a sentence more on autism, and I'll come back to it later as we end the show. 
many parents tell me that uh, I don't want my child to mix around with other children with autism because my child as is high functioning and progressed well and and if he mixes around with others who are not as high, high functioning uh, he, he might go down not true at all not true at all don't allow your child to be in a cocoon and protect him as much as that he cannot see the world open his eyes to the world so what is so important is is that is that is that let your child and let the family meet once in a while online offline and 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 let me share how to come out of the cocoon if you are in the cocoon if 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 you are in a cocoon and if you actually do not don't know how to do it and you are very worried and scared of how to come out of it well do you are you watching the women's cricket world cup happening in new zealand elisa haley knees of iron haley scored a phenomenal 170 for Australia. I don't know what has happened to the game now. They scored uh, beyond 300 uh, in, the, in the 50 overs. Phenomenal. But there's one thing about this game which also is a learning for us, for all of us. What is the difference between the game where men play and, and the women play on the ground? What is the difference? The biggest difference is there's a lot of sound during the Women's World Cup from the ground, not from the galleries. They express their feelings very openly. And when the men play, there's only some amount of, of heckling happening or some amount of comments from the wicketkeeper to the bowler. Shabash, shabash, shabash. But the women, a lot of voices. Because women share emotions much easily than men. So my dear friends, if you are still frozen, inside your homes if you're still very scared inside your homes i'll tell you what to do and that is number one my dear friends is if the frozen emotions have to become have to have to really uh, dissolve and become water expose it to sunlight expose it to air and light which means if you cannot or do not feel like going out of the house or scared, just come out of the gallery and expose it to air and light. Go down your, probably your building or, your, or come out of your chawl and expose it to the light. And, 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 and then, and then you'll find that slowly you're able to be aware of your feelings. Because feelings when frozen become size. And when feelings dissolve, you're slowly aware of your feelings. And when I say you're aware of your feelings, what happens is, what happens is, you tend to experience the feelings. That is fear. Fear, catastrophic fear. Sadness at people whom you have lost, neighborhood, families, or outside. And anger against the COVID virus. As you feel, behave like the cricketers in the Women's World Cup. Share this with your family members. Even if you are the head of the family, no shame. There's, show, there's no shame in tears. There's no shame in fears. And there's no shame in allowing the feelings not only to dissolve, but also to find a path, a small rivulet, a small stream, so that the mind and the heart gets lightened. As you do that, you might experience different sensations in your body. Let it come, let it go. Be, be childlike, not childish. People who are childlike have a great impact on others. People who are childlike also live much more healthy lives than others. And as you experience the feelings dissolving, and, 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 and becoming a rivulet or a stream, you will feel lighter. And as you feel lighter, you would not mind opening the door and pressing the bell of your neighbor and asking him, how are you? You won't, you won't mind opening your door and going down, going around your house and saying hello to your watchman or going out of your chawl and taking around and saying hello to the grocer. And when you start saying hello, 
the rivulets expand, the stream expands, the ice dissolves. And as the ice dissolves, fear goes becomes less, anger becomes less, sadness becomes less, and you feel free, your 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 legs automatically get wheels. Your hands automatically you find that it is swinging. And then as you do that slowly, you find yourself walking. And as you slowly walk, my dear friends, you can again restart your lives. So fears when shared, fears when written on a piece of paper by a pen, blinks, fears when exposed to air and sunlight dissolves. And then you can start your life one step at a time. But in spite of this, if the ice is frozen at minus 40 degrees centigrade, at minus 40 degrees centigrade, all these things may not help. And that's the time you have to believe ki tumne mera namak nahi khaya hai par goli kha. And when you take a chemical solvent, a chemical medicine which, which goes and works on the neurotransmitters of the brain slowly, that does the work of the air, the breeze and the sunlight and, and helps your hands to swing and and your your thoughts to dissolve and you can start your life all over again and that i think is, is so so important my dear friends i also see many friends asking me Ab sab chala gaya, let's celebrate there are various types of celebration there is mindful celebration there is mindless celebration and what is mindful celebration and mindless celebration well, attending a rock concert and dancing as if you've never danced after taking weed or hash or a drug is not mindful celebration. Running out of an incarcerated jail and, and feeling so free that you become bizarre and, and irrational and behave in a manner that could be risky for yourself and for the others is mindless celebration. Mindful celebration is meeting all those guys whom you have never met for a long time. Yesterday, a young boy who joined a law college, a BBA college in Bangalore, told me that he enjoyed playing cricket with the seniors for five hours. He said he has not played cricket for three years. He had put on weight and that joy of playing a healthy game is mindful celebrations. So mindful celebration would not mean that you should not dance. You should not jump, but dance and jump without a substance. Dance and jump where you are not hurt or where you don't hurt anybody emotionally and physically. Dance and jump as if there are years to go, not as if this is the last day of your life. So I would say, as Dr. Shashank asked me, mindful celebration is more important than mindless celebration. And the temptation to have a mindless celebration is very big. The other day, a young boy said, I want to, I want to party every day late at night, not done it for two years. I said, no, you may party once in a while late at night. Nothing wrong in that. But if you party daily, late at night, you're destroying your sleep-awake cycle. This destruction will be worse than the isolation due to COVID. This destruction will be worse than the lack of concentration, low interest or low mate during COVID. So do not plunge from one ocean into the other. Or, or one well to the other, mindful celebration is more important and more healthy than mindless celebration. But, but people say, uh, you might say this, Dr. Shetty, but our children refuse to listen. They refuse to say anything about it. And I tell them, yes, it's difficult to really stop teenagers. They're full of energy. But if you sit down and mindfully explain to them that they are not against any celebration parents are not against any celebration but do it in small doses and here I, I i recall a metaphor 
which on with a different view by Swami Vivekananda. He said, eat less so that you can eat more. This has been shared with me by uh, Dr. Captain Sujit Chatterjee, my friend. And he said, eat less so that you eat more. I did not understand this at all. And Dr. Sujit explained to me, when you eat less, you live longer. And ultimately, you eat more. So celebrate less, less, less. And actually, you celebrate more. So that is the answer to Dr. Shashank's worry about how should you go about celebrating mindfully and not mindlessly. One more question he asked before he went down for his lecture now. And he said, he asked me, Dr. Shetty, will there be a lurking fear all our lives of COVID returning? Will there be a lurking sadness which, which, which pains you all your lives if you have lost somebody? And very important questions he shared before he actually left. <clears throat> and I would say, yes, there could be. And, 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 and here, and here I would, I would, I would ask you to, to just imagine three things. The mind is full of billions of neurons. It stores information beyond the size of the best computer. No computer has still been made which could, which could have that space and that width and that breadth and the depth of the human brain. Well, there'll always be somewhere in the corner a little fear of this coming back, but that will not actually, actually stop us from living a life. But if the fears are more then you might have a panic anxiety, then you might have anxiety, and you, you might have other things. But the best thing to do again, I would say, yoga. Yesterday, I was talking to a bunch of teachers, and I asked them, do you know who's Patanjali? And nobody knew who's Patanjali. So my dear parents and adults, please tell your children about Patanjali and yoga right from the age of two or three. And, and that really brings down that anxiety and that fear. Also, when children see their parents peaceful, mindful, their fear also goes down. And if I just see others who are peaceful and mindful, the fears would go down. But if there's a little fear across time, it's nothing wrong. It's also very protective. Uh, increased fear might paralyze our lives. At the same time, the sadness, yes, yes, yes. If you've lost somebody in the, in the pandemic, there will be sadness for some time. Well, everybody says, I want a closure. When people break up, they say, I want a closure. I want to meet that person for the last time. And it never happens. You meet them and you want to meet them again. You want to meet them again. And remember, there is no complete closure to any separation. A little pain remains. And that's perfectly all right. Perfectly all right. All protocols are over, says Pradeep, including wearing of mask, But... Railway is still announced to wear mask. Even Dr. Harishit is wearing a mask. I would say, I would say, <coughs> railways are basically central government. And the state has really asked you to remove all the protocols. Nothing wrong what the state has said. And nothing wrong what the Western Railway has said. Remember, if you are traveling in a train, there are a lot of people, a lot of people. And you might have one person who is just recovering from Omicron. So I would say, Pradeep, it's important to wear the mask in trains. I wear the mask in my clinic. I wear the mask in the hospital. I wear the mask in any closed spaces. I'm the only person who wears a mask in a closed space. And I wear the mask in public places where people, where there's a lot of crowd. That I think we should be doing uh, even now. Having said this, let me come to two more questions. I, I saw this, this, this gentleman. Who had, a, who had a very obsessive trait. An obsessive trait is when you want everything perfect to the last T, absolutely to the last T. And, and uh, he has been forcing his children to wash hands repeatedly, even if they, they open the door and come in. <clears throat> well, they're inside the door. They just open the door to see who was it. And when they come in, he insists on the children washing their hands again and again. He insists on the maid to wash her hands again and again, but after she cleans one room and she goes to the other room, he insists his mother and his wife to clean their hands again and again, if they pick the broom, if they pick the plate, etc., etc. And he says, uh, they are very, very uh, relaxed. They are not affected by any COVID fears, 
but I would want to take no risk and I would want to implement uh, excessive washing, not only to myself, but my, to my entire family. And then I had to gently tell him that this is nothing to do with COVID. There's nothing to do with COVID protocol, but this is only due to an obsessive rumination that you get that unless they clean re recurrently and repeatedly, unless you clean recurrently and repeatedly, you are not comfortable. You have a lot of sensations of anxiety. And because of that, because of that, you unconsciously, unknowingly are troubling everybody. And that can also be because of changes in the neurotransmitter environment in the brain. It may be due to COVID. It may not be due to COVID, but the cause as of now is not important. In a large number of cases in mental health, the root cause analysis, which is used most of the times in understanding engineering deficits or defects, does not apply to mental health. And I told him, let us, let us help you with altering the neurotransmitter environment by medications and by cognitive behavior therapy through a psychologist trained in the same. He said, yes, very reluctantly came and he argued with me for a very long time. Doctor, you will not understand. Three people died in a building and I don't trust WHO. They were wrong initially. They allowed China to go berserk and the world had to pay for their decision. They are like intelligence agencies, which, 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 which give us alerts, which give us intelligence alerts, but there's no actionable intelligence. So I don't trust WHO. I don't trust Anthony Fucci or any other experts who have been changing their, their versions all the time. I don't trust the, the vaccines because there are contradictory results. So I would like to be overtly careful. I acknowledged what he said, but I did not accept. I acknowledged what he said and I actually, actually told him, let us acknowledge what you say. Let us examine the evidence which you say a little later. Would you be kind enough to take the small pill and meet my clinical psychologist trained in occupational, in, in, in cognitive behavior therapy? And he accepted. In two weeks time, he was 50% better. In eight, eight weeks time, he will become at least 70 to 80% better. The family will be saved of the agony of washing their hands again and again. And he himself will be a much calmer. So my dear friends, a lot of mental symptoms are seen across time. And we need to, we need to see to it that we do not attribute everything to COVID. And even if it is because of COVID, we can actually, we can actually, actually treat it and improve the health of the family. Sometimes such symptoms might cause the family to get depressed and that is so so important so harish chandra singh says the people speaking or murmuring their sleep condition is it a sign of anxiety and i would say there are a lot of people talking their sleep is perfectly normal perfectly normal they have this habit of talking the sleep but if somebody has started talking the sleep recently and he gets uh, night mares and night terrors he wakes up with with fear he wakes up seeing a, a very difficult <coughs> uh, event in his dream and he and he and he and he really talks loudly sc screams then you need to look at anxiety if it's a habit across time you may ignore it a lot of uh, divorce cases have been filed against people who talk in the sleep but if a little muttering little murmuring happening in sleep is perfectly all right and if it is troubling the person to a point that when he's awake, he's not fresh, we know she's awake, he's, he feels very anxious and disturbed, then and then only you need to really look at uh, uh, consultation with a psychologist or a psychiatrist and see to it that it's corrected. Also, my dear friends, it's so important to understand, it's so important to understand that, that sleep walking is also uh, very very uh, common and it's very dangerous when you travel in a train etc so this has to be treated at the earliest at times also on a bad day on a bad night 
if you have not slept for long, if you have, if you have had alcohol, if you had any addictive substance, you might you might talk in sleep, and and that is, is something which you need to really really manage. So as COVID is withdrawing its clutches from people on the earth, and as the human body has adapted to the COVID virus by pr producing antibodies and, and being prepared for the same in the future. Influenza did 100 years ago what COVID did today, and today we, we live with influenza. So I would say, and my friend Dr. Shashank would say that both of us would agree that we need to live with COVID. And with this, on Gudi Padwa, a day before, and with all the all the festivals which have been there, <coughs> I would promise you to come back with more shows every week. And before signing adieu, I would like to share a small story. And that story relates to an 18-year-old boy who went to the United States of America, started his, his studies just six months back. And somebody told him that if you have to live here, you have to take weed. And that would really help you get more energy to, to study from a very conservative family in India, from very conservative Orthodox family in India. This boy with no guile, with very little exposure to such substance in India, with very little knowledge, he started taking it and took it continuously six times in a day. And in three months' time, he fell mentally ill. He was forced to get admitted in the emergency medical section in a U.S. hospital. When he was brought back, he was a wreck. He was completely irrelevant, talking to himself, hallucinating, very aggressive and very angry. And what happened was he is slowly recovering. So I would request all those who are sending their children abroad for studies, not only to speak to the counselor who tells them which flat to book, how far is your college from your house, how do you change your dollars, how do you change your, sell your, send your drafts to your son. No, that education is easy, but I think you need to make children aware that when they go abroad to any country, what is the discipline they need to actually uh, have? What are the consequences of such things which I just, just described? And remember, brain is one of the most finest organs in the human body. And it needs to be preserved because this era is not an agrarian era, but it's a cognitive era. Era, large number of us use our head and coconut, even for farming, and even for in, even for for all other activities. So let's protect our brain. And on the World Autism Day, I would request each family to see to it that the child, most of them would join inclusive schools. I would urge all parents also to support inclusive education. Tell the children to see to it that they accept a child with autism in the class. Tell their, themselves and the Parent Teachers Association to be kind to children with autism. Tell the Parent Teacher Association and you parents to advocate for inclusion of all children with disabilities. With this, we thank you for joining us today. We have held this seminar in the most difficult circumstances, but we'll try and see to it that we come back to you week after week and see to it that we continue our conversation. We have really learned a lot from you and we continue learning a lot all the time. Thank you.